trust in the Lord. Good morning, Wheat Street Baptist Church, friends and family. It is good to be in the house of the Lord yet one more time. Listen, I know that you are not in this house, but turn your secret place into a sanctuary. I just want to invite you to remove all distractions out of your way while we have this moment to marinate in the presence of an almighty God. It has been a week, but there's no place that I would rather be this morning except for in the house of the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Listen to the words uh, from Psalm chapter 9 verses 1 through 4 and there it says, I will praise you Lord with all my heart and tell about the wonders you have worked. God, most high, I will rejoice. I will celebrate and sing because of you. When my enemies face you, they run away and stumble and are destroyed. You take your seat as judge and your fair decisions prove that I was in the the right. Let us bow our heads as we collectively go to the throne of grace. Dear gracious and eternal God, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together. Thank you for this moment of keeping us connected. And we thank you for this moment to be saturated and in your presence on this morning. Dear God, we thank you for your keeping power. You have kept us all week long. You have kept us in the midst of social unrest. You have kept us in the midst of this pandemic. And for that, God, we give you praise. Now, dear Heavenly Father, bless this service. Allow something to be said in the sermon. Allow something to be sang from uh, the choir, dear God. Allow something to encourage our spirits at this time. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Good morning, Wheat Street Baptist Church. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And even though you're not here in this house, you are there in your house. You're not in a hospital. You're not in a jail cell, but you're sitting in your own home. And you have the opportunity in this moment to join us as we lift the name of Jesus. Would you join me as we sing our opening hymn this morning? We come this far by faith. sing together. We've come this far by faith. Never. 
Baptist Church friends and uh, family. If you are visiting with us for the first time, we just want to make sure that you feel uh, welcome in this virtual cathedral. We want to make sure uh, that you feel right at home. So go ahead and do me a favor. Go ahead and comment in the comment section on Facebook Live and on YouTube Live as well. And our entire uh, church family will make sure that you feel the love of Jesus Christ. And to uh, the members of this house, why don't we go ahead and take the time to greet each other. Go ahead. If you see a name that has been on your spirit that's on the live stream, go ahead and uh, text that person in the comment section and go ahead and continue to build a sense of community in this virtual experience. And if you have little ones at your house, make sure that you go to the Young Disciples Ministry page. It can be found on the Wheat Street Baptist Church Facebook page. They have an interactive uh, Bible study. They have uh, videos and they sing songs and play games. So make sure uh, that you register uh, your child. It doesn't matter how small or how old uh, they are, but make sure that you register uh, them so they can take a part in the Young Disciples Ministry and be edified in Christian education in on their own level. And family, we just want to remind everyone that this upcoming Wednesday, this upcoming uh, Wednesday on September the 16th, we will have a virtual family meeting. So please uh, tell uh, everyone that you know that's associated with the church to keep their eyes peeled uh, to the announcements that are going to be coming forward. We will have another virtual family meeting on September uh, the 16th as a uh, well time is filled with swift transition not of earth unmoved can stand but build your hopes on things eternal just hold to God's unchanging hand. You know this one, sing this with me. Hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. You gotta hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. And build your hopes on things eternal. Just hold to God's unchanging hand. Let's declare that one more time. Hold to his hand. Hold to his hand. Hold God's unchanging hand. You gotta hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Let's build our hopes on things 
eternal. You got a hold to God's unchanging hand. One last time, hold, hold to his hand. Yes, Lord, God's unchanging hand. We got a hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand and build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. Clap those hands. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now we have reached that time in our service. It is time for our tithes and our offering. Uh, listen, you all have been so uh, generous, even with the circumstances. Uh, we appreciate your uh, generosity, and we just want to encourage you uh, to give. We just want to encourage you uh, to give as we've been commanded, and give out of uh, the bosom of your heart as uh, well. It's God's financial plan for God's church and for uh, God's people. Uh, listen to the words coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verse 7, and there it reads, each one must give as they have decided in their hearts, and not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful uh, giver. Amen. Listen, family, there's a number of ways to give. You can go to the website at www. Uh, com. We are a wheatstreet.org, and you can give that way, or you can give through the Easy Tithe app, which can be found on your cell phone or your tablet device. Or you can uh, use a text to give, and you can utilize that uh, number as well. And you have the option to mail in your tithes and offering to 18 William Holmes Borders Senior Drive right here in Atlanta, uh, Georgia. And family, let's make sure that we continue to do what we can to ensure that this church keeps on keeping on. Amen. You can't be God giving, no matter how you try, for just, just as sure that you are living and the Lord. He's in heaven on high. The more you give, the more he gives to you. Just keep on giving. It's really true that you, you can't beat God giving no matter how you try. Now let us have a word of prayer. Dear gracious and eternal God, we just thank you for the gifts that have uh, been given or the gifts uh, that are in the process of being given. Oh God, continue to stretch, continue to multiply, and continue to bless not only the gift, but the giver as well. And dear Heavenly Father, allow those gifts to be used for the edification of your kingdom. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Jesus loves me This I know
the Bible to join me 
by going to the gospel according to Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. Listen now for the word of the Lord. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him, and a great storm of wind arose. And the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushions, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care if we perish? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great to them, why are you afraid? Have you no faith? And they were filled with awe and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? of God, for the people of God, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity to share your word. And we ask right now, oh God, that you open our hearts, our minds, and the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen and amen. Amen. Often in our lives, situations shake us, causing us to become overwhelmed, fearful, and utterly dismayed. When we experience these often unanticipated circumstances, they rob us of our calm, our sense of security, and our peace. The absence of peace usually disturbs our well-being. It steals our joy, inhibits our praise, and undermines our sense of control. And if we're honest, this absence of peace sometimes calls into question our faith. Anybody having challenges with peace today? Peace, that sense of quieting that can be defined as tranquility, harmony, or security. Peace that Jesus assured in John 14 and 27 when he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I'm talking about peace this morning. But would you agree that peace is something that we all want, yet few of us completely 
or consistently achieve it. Our lives are filled with so many perplexities, confusion, sickness, pain, evil, injustice, hatred, and so much trouble. And when these circumstances arise, you can rest assured that there will be a disruption of your peace. Do I have any witnesses this morning? Have you ever had a child that was lost and you could not find them? Did that disturb your peace? Have you ever had an ungrateful and demanding boss that you just couldn't seem to please? Did that disturb your peace? Have you ever had a problem in your marriage that you wanted to work out but you did not get the results that you had hoped for from someone who promised to love, honor, and cherish? Did that disturb your peace. Have you ever had a health challenge? And the doctor said that they had done all that they could do. Did that disturb your peace? Or maybe you had a long time friend that you loved and trusted. And that friend betrayed your trust and took you for granted, did that disturb your peace? Or have you ever been separated from a loved one amid a pandemic and you knew they were accustomed to seeing you and you have to trust the frontliners to take care and to love on them and to keep them safe? as you would because you just can't be there. Does that disturb your peace? Oh, I know I'm talking to someone this morning. Perhaps you don't have these issues, but for those of us who do, we would admit that in the midst of the hardship, all we really wanted was peace. But how? How is that possible, one might ask. My life is a wreck. My finances are horrible. I just got laid off of my job. My bills are due. I'm about to lose this health insurance that I finally got and you're talking about peace. First it's this, and then it's that. I get one thing fixed, and something else breaks. Loneliness, despair, destruction, mass killings and shootings, hurricanes, fires, and floods. And you're talking about peace. Let's be real. This concept of peace is often far-fetched, especially in times like this. Yet the word peace is found 429 times in the Bible. Though in our lives it is often related to the actions and the attitudes of others, peace is ultimately a gift from God. And because we serve a God who is the benefactor of this peace, we can face our hardships and our storms with confidence and assurance because the presence of peace is with us. As we now consider our text, I call your attention to the disciples' 3G experience. 
And it is my prayer that their experience will encourage you this morning. G1, the great storm. The great storm. Jesus is in the midst of his teaching and healing ministry. As he and the disciples crossed to the other side of the sea by boat, they encounter a great storm. Now let me point out that this is not just any storm. It was a great storm according to the text. There are storms and there are great storms. Hurricane Michael, a tropical cyclone that hit the Florida Panhandle in October of 2018, was a powerful storm. But Katrina, a Category 5 hurricane that hit Louisiana in August of 2005, where there was an estimated $250 billion in property damage, an economic impact, and 1,833 deaths was a great storm. Jesus and his disciples encountered a great storm. The year 2020, for many of us, has also been a great storm. Throughout Jesus' ministry, we are presented with scenes around the Sea of Galilee, which sits in a basin about 700 feet below sea level, and is surrounded by steep mountains on the east and towering hills on the west. Windstorms were common and I read that the cold upper air from Mount Hermon collides with the warm air rising from the sea producing frequent and severe weather conditions. Verse 37 reads, and a great storm of wind arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already feeling. Friends, great storms are a fact of life, and they will hit us indirectly or directly, often leaving little to no time for preparation. In recent months, weeks, and days, our country has seen disaster after disaster. Storm after storm, calamity after calamity. Along with these storms come heart-wrenching emotional, financial, physical, and spiritual unrest. It has been said that either we are in a storm, headed towards a storm, or coming out of a storm. And if there is the unlikely chance that you've never encountered or being affected by a storm, I will simply say, as my grandmother once said to me, keep on living. But the good news is that in the midst of the storms, for the believer there is one constant that should keep us steady, keep us from losing it, even when facing the most threatening circumstances. And that constant is Jesus. Tell yourself this morning, I'm in the presence of peace. The presence of peace. Can't you see the disciples, these experienced fishermen, experienced fishermen, scared? Can't 
can't you see them scrambling and freaking out on the boat? But more importantly, do you see yourselves wigging out, feeling hopeless and fearful? And I'm not minimizing this storm or any storms. I'm just calling our attention to the fact that they do affect us. Great storms will and do threaten your stability and your peace. But we ought to have some experience with the Lord by now, brothers and sisters. We talked about David in Bible study a few weeks ago, and we understand that sometimes we have to call, recall our history with the Lord. Verse 38 reads, but he was in the stern asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care if we perish? Now I love the fact that Jesus is sleeping in the stern of the boat. And the stern is the back part of the boat. He's isolated, likely resting from a day of healing and teaching. Jesus is at peace during the storm while everyone else is panicking. Many of us spend night after night panicking, worrying, and anxious about our storms. Don't you love the irony in such a perilous situation? It is amazing that Jesus was in the stern asleep. In the scripture, sleeping in the midst of adversity is a symbol for complete trust in God. Do you trust him? Jesus is asleep and the message for somebody this morning is go to sleep. Staying up all night worrying is not going to change or improve your situation. Go to sleep. The author of the third Psalm knows something about a storm and records, Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying to me, there is no help for him in God. But then he recalls his history and he says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cry aloud to the Lord and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and sleep. I wake again for the Lord sustains me. The Lord sustains you too. Go to sleep. The truth is in the midst of our great storms, we sometimes cannot see Jesus. We become so preoccupied with the storm and we forget that he is with us on the boat, on the job, in our schools, in our communities, in the sick room, in the courtroom, in our troubled homes, in our churches, Jesus is in the boat. The disciples panicked with Jesus on the boat. Though they had experienced several 
mountaintop moments with Jesus, seeing miracle after miracle, up close and personal, now find themselves in the midst of a great storm, allowing fear to take over. Jesus chose and failed to recall the lessons they had learned about the power and the presence of their leader. Now we can't judge or criticize these disciples too harshly because some of us will hear this word this morning, turn off our devices, and later today or tomorrow, go to our respected workplaces or get some undesirable news or pick up some unpaid bills or have an undesirable experience and forget that Jesus is on the boat. Friends, there is a thin line between fear and faith, but the lesson is great storms will come, but Jesus is on the boat and he can bring great calm. G2, great calm. So they wake him in verse 38b. Teacher, do you not care if we perish? Our great storms will sometimes make us question whether or not God cares. While Jesus sleeping in the storm may signify his trust in God, that's not what it signified to the frightened disciples. Obviously, to them, it indicated that Jesus did not care about their predicament. And they rebuked him saying, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Has anyone ever been there? Jesus, we are dying. Do you see the numbers? Are you listening to the news? Do something. This is the language of desperation and frustration. One commentary paraphrases their rebuke. Teacher, are we to drown for all you can? In these words, we sense this feeling that God had forsaken his people. Do you ever feel that way? I know many of us are not comfortable and would never admit to questioning God. However, with the unprecedented death toll and escalating diagnosis of this virus, massive numbers of unemployment, and with unchecked insanity wreaking havoc in the highest office of these United States. Be honest. Have you ever asked, God, do you see me? I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders. Do you see me with the tears in my eyes? Do you see me with this broken heart? Lord, do you care? Do you see me drowning in these bills with limited to no resources left for my children? This ship is sinking and I'm about to go under. Lord, do you care? The disciples' cry is the ultimate cry of fear, of doubt, and abandonment. And it amounts to a prayer for deliverance. Lord, do you care? 
And it is immediately and directly answered. Jesus does not chastise or reason with their fears. He does not immediately seek to correct their theology or to remind them of the whole tradition of God's deliverance and care for the people of Israel. Instead, he immediately woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. Peace, be still. With his command, the response of the winds is immediate. The wind ceased and there arose a great calm. I love the dichotomy here. Consider the contrast. The description of this great calm exactly matches and counters the great storm that started our narrative. The great storm that brought so much fear to the disciples gave and obeyed the voice of Jesus and great calm came upon the waters. Peace, be still. Friends, don't allow anxiety fear, frustration, grief, loss, and the chaos all around to cause you to lose sight of the master who still speaks peace to your storm. This great calm is evident in the 23rd Psalm where the psalmist declares that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. That's great calm. It's evident in Psalm 46 and 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I'm talking about great calm. The gusty winds and the stormy waves were brought under subjection by the voice and the command of Jesus. Peace, be still. Stop worrying, stop fretting, brothers and sisters. You are in the presence of peace. And that's the good news that I wanted to share this morning. It does not matter how high the water rises or how fierce the wind blows. Jesus can still calm your stormy situation. In our own strength, we lack sufficient resources and the ability to meet life's challenges. But if you know Jesus, if you trust Jesus, if he is in your boat, not on your boat, but in your boat, you can have this peace that provides great calm in the midst of a great storm. Let him in your boat. And finally, we serve a great God. G3, a great God. We serve an unlimited God, a boundless God, an abundant God, a lofty God, and an enormous God. He's great. To say God is great is not the same as saying he's awesome or God is amazing. Rather, to speak of God's greatness is to talk about God's authority and power as we've seen in our text. 
the winds and the waves obey and submit to his authority. One of the most amazing things about this miracle is how it affected the disciples. Not only did they fear for their lives, but they literally feared the power of this great God. We sense the fear that they had during the great windstorm, but it is not until after the miracle where there was great calm that our text mentions their fear. As fearful as they may have been during the storm, during the calm, we read, they were filled with awe, which can be translated that they were filled with great fear and said to one another, what manner of man is this? Who is this Jesus that even the wind and the stormy sea obey him? We serve a great God. His greatness is his right to rule and his power over all things, including your circumstances. He reigns because he's great. He rules because he's great. He conquers, he commands, he speaks, he creates, he lifts, he cleanses, he heals, he delivers, he calms, he speaks peace to your turbulent situation. We serve a great God. And as we continue to navigate through our challenges, through this season of COVID-19, this season of political and social unrest, we must remember the greatness, the greatness of our God. And in case you are tempted to become fearful and forget, I invite you to read 1 Chronicles 29 and 11, where it says, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. Great God. Jeremiah 32 and 17, O sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arms. Nothing is too hard for you. Psalm 45 and 3, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. And according to the 93rd Psalm verse 4, he is mightier than the thunders of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea. The Lord is high and mighty. We serve a great God. He's great in power, great in love, great in forgiveness, great in mercy, great in provision, great in deliverance. He is, he is, he is a great God. And that is why you can have peace and remain calm when all around you a storm is raging. Jesus is in your boat. He will not let you perish and you must believe you are going to make it and you must know that he will bring you safely through 
Jesus is speaking to someone's fearful heart this morning. Peace, be still. And I can hear the late Reverend James Cleveland, the father of gospel, in his lyrics based on our text. He obviously knew something about storms when he penned, Master, the tempest is raging. The billows are tossing high. The sky is o'ershadowed with blackness. No shelter or help is not. Carest thou not that we perish? How canst thou lie asleep? when each moment so madly is threatening a grave in the angry deep. The winds and the waves shall obey thy will. Peace be still, peace be still, peace be still. Whether the wrath or the storm Tossy or demons or men or whatever it be, no water can swallow the ship where lies the master of oceans and earth and skies. They all shall sweetly obey his will. Peace, peace. Peace, be still. I don't know the nature of your storm, but I do know who can calm it. Let Jesus speak peace to your storm today. Amen, amen, and amen.
The doors of the church are now open to you. Many of you have been worshiping with us for the past several months. And we would love to extend this invitation for you to become a member of our church family. We invite you to join us as we continue to seek this Jesus who is still able to speak peace in the midst of our storms. Won't you join us today? The doors of this house are open to receive you at this time. There are ministers standing by to welcome you into this fellowship. Amen.